All right, well, welcome back, everybody. We've got parts, the right ones this time. Uh, it's time to start putting stuff back together for a change. So what I've got going on here is I think I'm gonna put the springs together with the insulator bushings, uh, get those all set up, and then I'll set the axles down on it. And then once all that's put together, we'll pick up the uh, trunnion stand here and maneuver it in there, get the, uh, the half caps on it, get the U-bolts on it, and get them snugged up. I ended up going with the poly insulator pads per the uh, advice of the spring shop that I used. They, uh, they said a lot of people are preferring the poly pads on the bottom and the rubber on the top. Um, so there really wasn't any price difference between rubber and poly, so for what the heck, I'll try it. Get under that one. That's not very stable. <laughs> Just don't breathe on it. Uh, you might be wondering why I've got one cap that's an oddball. Because during sandblasting, we noticed that little hole right there. Now, that isn't wear on the inside of it. That's where on the outside from all the years of getting drugged through the mud. Uh, I've got another one, a good one. I'm just waiting for it to get sandblasted. We'll paint it up and it won't take much to swap out this cap. I ain't letting this hold me up. I've been waiting for too long. Thank you. 
Okay, so on your caps up here, you've got two different kinds of bolts. On the inside, you've got threads that are in the axle housing, and that is a coarse thread bolt. Um, let me see here. Doesn't give me the size. I want to say that's probably a seven eighths bolt though. That's awesome. Okay. Remember, the bigger the gob, the better the job. You get the idea. I ain't gonna bore you with uh, the entire process of putting all the bolts in, especially since I don't have any air tools, particularly sockets big enough for these bolts. They're an inch and five sixteenths head. Uh, so yeah, I'll bring you back whenever we're ready to set the rear axle in. All right, well, fast forward a couple of days and we're back at it. Um, I was able to get my three quarter inch impact and my big socket set down here and I had to make me up a big half inch airline to go from my air compressor to back here because uh, the little three eighths airline just don't cut it with that three quarter inch gun. So let's uh, get our rear drive hooked up and dropped in. Everything's still pretty cold down here. I was running the heater, but it's so dang noisy, you wouldn't be able to hear anything but the heater. But I want to say it was all oh, about 15 degrees Fahrenheit this morning when I came down here, so. Especially since this voice is so dang heavy to try to push around. That thing's got a 1500 pound counterweight on it. Might be able to make that work. <clears throat>
Hmm. The inner bolts, at least on this side, have to go up through the bottom because they thread into this uh, mount that's on the axle. But because everything's sitting on the floor, I don't have enough room between the floor and the uh, insulator box to get the bolt started. So what I may have to do is just snug these bolts up and get up under it with a floor jack and just jack it up enough to where I can get the bolts in. No, I don't want to go too crazy with them. Because if I draw this up too much and then my bolt isn't going to line up over there, but that should be enough to at least keep it together so I can jack it up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the other side real quick. And uh, yeah, I'll just go ahead and get this jacked up off camera, get those bolts started in there, and then. Uh, We'll go ahead and start getting the training back together, see if we can get that up under this whole uh, mess we got going on here. Okay, well, we've got the axles put onto the springs here. Uh, the bolts are run up most of the way, but I didn't fully tighten them down because uh, just in case I gotta maneuver things around a little bit whenever I go to put the training stand on. So the plan is pick up trunnion stand and try to get it in here at an angle and then get it down and twist it. And if you noticed, I already got one of the bushings put on. Uh, when I got the second round of new ones, I put this on just to test it, make sure it fit right. And then uh, it didn't want to come back off and I didn't really want to tear it up with screwdrivers and pry bars getting it back off. So, ta-da, shiny and bushing. Okay, trunnion's in place. Uh, what I ended up doing to get it down in there is I just took the bolts out of this insulator box, jacked it way up, and I was able to pull this leaf spring out just by hand. 
uh, enough for this part of the trunnion leg to uh, drop down in there. So not ideal, but like I said, I've only got one piece of equipment in this garage to pick stuff up with, and that's this hoist. So, well, I mean, besides a floor jack. So sometimes you gotta get a little creative, but we're gonna go ahead and get the other bushing put on there and get our saddles and our U-bolts and start putting stuff back together. This, this right here is exciting. It's nice to put stuff together for a change. It gets awful depressing when you're just spending day after day, week after week, month after month, just taking stuff apart. Start to get a little bit overwhelming. So we'll get you set back up and continue with the reassembly. Just need to push this back over where it belongs. Drop that down. Well, that one went in awful easy. Okay, well, I think I've got just about everything that I'm gonna need all gathered up here. So, I guess first place to start, I'm gonna be putting our new bushing on. I don't know if you're supposed to lubricate these at all or not. I highly doubt you are. But I found it makes it a heck of a lot easier to get on if you use, you know, some sort of lubricant. Now, it'd probably be wise not to use something that's, uh, uh, what would you call it, like petroleum-based because it might start to eat away at the uh, urethane here. So what I'm using is Murphy's oil soap. You use it for uh, mountain tires and whatnot. So if it's safe for a tire, it's probably safe for this. And uh, yeah, just get a big old freaking handful of goo here and It'll make my life a little bit easier getting this thing on. So this might be a little bit difficult because it's hanging, but... Oh yeah, it's a tight fit. Um, 
Actually, you know what would be good for this? My back out punch. See if I can't get my foot up under this thing so I don't swing around so much. Oops. <laughs> you didn't see that, but all of the uh, oil soap that got gathered up at the end on that last hit just sprayed everywhere. And that. Perfect. Oh, I love it when a plane comes together. Of course, that reminds me of uh, one of the old mechanics that I used to work with. He taught me a lot as far as uh, rebuilding engines and whatnot goes. And after I got done with my first rebuild, you know, I was all excited, you know, when it finally got running and it was running good and whatnot. And, he comes over and you know I said well it's running and it sounds good and he says well it's supposed to run ain't it thanks couldn't, couldn't just let me have that huh oh well okay now let's oh. Do our top saddle here. Now I don't believe there's an inside and the outside, but just looking at the either the groove that's wore into it or machined into it, I'm gonna say it's wore because it's uneven. I'm gonna say this goes towards the inside. need to do is try to scooch this over some, get that lined up and try to pick it up. Yeah, it looks about right. And we got our top plate for our springs and our big old friggin' new bolts. Oh, don't you dare! Ooh, that was almost bad. Beautiful. We'll get our bottom plate lined up.
Now these U-bolts get torqued up to some ridiculous amount, like 1,400 or 1,500 foot-pound. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to be doing that. What the plan is, is once I get this all put back together, the wheels and everything on it, uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll get the front axle out from under the truck and rebuild all that, you know, just like I'm doing with this and get the frame rails painted and get a rolling frame together. And then hopefully in the springtime, and this is my goal, I'll be able to take that rolling frame, load it onto a trailer and take it to the spring shop and I'll have them do a three axle alignment and I'll have them torque up these U-bolts because they're a heck of a lot better equipped to do it than I am. I could if I really wanted to, but I don't want to. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to be here for probably a good hour or so running these nuts up on here until I can use a wrench. So we'll bring you back when I get to that point. Time to do it all over again on this side. At least this time around we've got some experience, huh? Okay. Uh, go in there like so. Whoops. Boy, it sure is nice having a good impact here. And that half inch airline makes all the difference with that three quarter inch gun. Well, that's about it because uh, at this point I'm out of new parts. So, I mean, all that's really left is to run those nuts up on the U-bolts and you know, the next step for this thing is gonna be getting the uh, the gearboxes pulled off and start going through them. Um, depending on the weather, uh, I may be painting the rims and not the tires. Like I said before, last night it was 14, 15 degrees, something like that. So, 
and I don't really have much for a heater in here. I just have one of those diesel, you know, torpedo heaters. So not really ideal conditions for painting. I had a chance to do the frame rails a couple weeks ago. It was decently warm, but I ended up having to work extra late that whole week. I think I was doing 15 hour days for seven days in a row. So yeah, I, needless to say, I never got a chance to do those frame rails. But you'll have that. So, that's what she looks like. It's coming together, looking good. Kind of sad that it's going to have to get tore apart yet again. So, until next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I don't know if you've seen, but we're at 500 now. And, uh, yeah. Have a good one. See you next time.